All right, so for our next for our next section, which will be covering pages 68 to 79 of the book, uh, we're going to be getting into the GUI, Graphical User Interfaces, with the Windows Forms project. We're going to be creating a form that follows all the standard rules of Windows. We're going to be adding buttons, and we're also going to be trying another type of loop. So let's go ahead and get started on that. First off, some t I want to point out the Solution Explorer. Inside of here, we have a solution and also a project. The project is called Hello Me. This is the project that C Sharp Project we created. Depending on how you started your program or how you started the project in the first place, or which version you are you're using, it may not have added a solution. Uh, but that's okay. It'll add a solution after we do this next part. So what I want to do is go up to File and go Add. This is important. Um, I could say new project up here, but if I say new project, it will replace what I have inside of here. What I want instead is to add a new project, because one solution can have multiple projects. It also came up and said I need to save this before adding a new project. Um, I haven't actually saved this at all yet, so of course I want to save it. Save it, and I'll just save it to the default space, which just to point out, it always likes to save it under your username in Windows, your documents folder, or my documents, and then it creates a folder under it named after the version of Visual Studio that you have. So even though this is Express, it doesn't include it there. It's just Visual Studio 2010. There, depending on the version you have, you'll also see 2012 or 2013. And then it has a projects folder, and underneath that, it's going to create the Hello Me project and the solution. So I'm going to save it and now it's giving me the option to add a new one, which I'm going to use a Windows Forms application. And I'm going to call this GUI Test. We're testing the GUI, the Graphical User Interface. And now I will hit OK. Make sure you have Windows Forms application. Make sure you're still in the C Sharp. It should so show Visual C Sharp over here. And hit OK. Now I've got two projects in here, the Hello Me, which was our text program, and now I have this Windows Forms app, this GUI test. Now that I have this, watch what happens when I run it. I did not get the graphical form program to start. You see this one? This is still just the designer tool for it. I still just have the old program running, which is not what I want. All right, so now, in order to get my new program to start, I'm going to right-click on GUI test and say, set a startup project. By default, only one project will start, and it's going to be the project you first created. But at any time, you can right-click and tell it to set another project as a start project. In this case, it's the GUI test, our new forms app that we just created. Uh, which you can also see is highlighted in bold, and now the previous Hello Me is not. If I hit play, I get my form. It shows up here, I can move it around. If I shake the form, this is a Windows 8, Windows 7 feature, there, everything else disappears. If I shake it again, everything else comes back. Uh, if I double click it, it expands to full screen. If I double click it again, it goes back down. Uh, I can resize the windows, I can hit the Windows key and left or right and get different sizes. It does everything that it's supposed to do. All of these buttons work. It minimizes. It comes back up. I can hit the X and the program closes. All of that has been provided for you just by creating the project by itself. So it's very quick and easy to actually start developing this stuff. Now, what neat something that we should do right away is I want to change something. You see this, the form one where it says the title? We also have a properties window. If your properties window didn't show up, you can right click on the actual visual object and say properties. And that highlighted the properties window. Additionally, you should have view and inside of there are other windows such as the properties window. You'll also find the solution explorer in case that disappears, the toolbox which we'll get into later, error lists, and a variety of other options. Depending on which version of Visual Studio you're using, you will have a lot of features showing up in there. Okay, so now moving on, 
I'm going to go over to the toolbox, which typically hides over here. But remember, if you can't find the toolbox at all, click View, Other Windows, Toolbox, and it will bring it up into view. Now, what I want to add is a button. So I'm going to add a button, and now I have a button on the form. Its text is what I want to change. I can change these properties about it. So its text, I'm going to start out with a simple one that just says for each. No, sorry, for next. So you can see it says for next. I can shrink down the button so that it's smaller and then it wraps the text and I can't see what happens next on it. Um, so sometimes you may need to adjust the size of the buttons. But going with the default size is usually a great place to start, and if everything fits there, excellent. Okay, so now that I have four next in here, I'm going to double click this. I double click this, and I'm now inside of another method. Before, in our old program, you could see we were inside of static void main, and inside of there it had the opening and closing curly braces. We're now inside of something similar, except this is private void button click our button one underscore click and now we have the curly braces everything in all the code we place inside of these curly braces will get executed anytime that button gets clicked which we said was a for next I am now going to say create a for next piece of code it's very much like our loops except it has a defined number of times that you're going to execute it so I will start out by typing F O, and that was enough it needed, all it needed for IntelliSense to find the for statement. Instead of having to write out the whole thing, I can just type in for, F-O-R, and hit tab twice, as long as this little snippet is highlighted. If I do, I hit tab twice, and suddenly it produces this whole section of code. It says for int i, it creates an integer, a number, and it says it equals zero to begin with. And this specific semicolon format is something that's how it has three of these variables passed into this at one time. That's something that is specific to the for statement, to this for section of code. This is sort of like an if statement. It's saying if the numbers are within a certain range, it will execute this, except this is defining the range. And it will repeat it only that number of times. So for int equals i, it starts at i. And then it has this red underline under length, which is also highlighted in yellow to indicate we should change it. We don't need to change the original i, but we should change length. We'll say it equals 3. So, it starts at 0, and it will continue to run this as long as i is less than 3. Oops. And every single iteration of this, every time it executes the code, it will then execute this, which increases i by 1. This is a special shortcut code. It's the exact same thing as saying i equals i plus 1. Except that takes so much longer, and there's so many times where we just increment a number by 1, we just wanted to do this once. So i plus plus. They shortened it down. Now inside of this code, I need a way to display this. Message box dot show. This is going to allow me to show a number to the user, which is going to be value. Oh, oh, sorry. We will just say i. Now this is going to mess up. The reason it's messing up is because it's expecting some kind of information. Uh, down in the bottom, it's highlighting. The last line says it's expecting something, and in parentheses it says it's expecting a string to be passed into message box.show. We passed in an integer. Fortunately, every integer and almost every type of object in the entire .NET or C Sharp system has a toString method. So I can convert a number into the string representation of it. So what's going to happen is this will get executed three times. Each time, i will be a different value. So let's try it. I hit play. Here is our form, following all of our regular form rules as usual. I hit for next, and now I see 0, 1, 2, and I hit OK. 
it didn't say three. It only showed me th three message boxes altogether, but it started at zero. If I wanted to set it to one, I could say it equals one and is greater than four, is, or as long as it is less than four. So that'll give me from one to three. Let's try this again. Four next, one, two, three. Hit OK. There. Message boxes are a great way to show information while you're debugging very quickly and easily. Uh, it's one of the earlier ways of producing messages and information back to the developer while you're creating this stuff. It's a great way to test what your values are and just put something in there fast. But it's not always the best option. But for now, we'll use it. Now, I want to create one more button. We have a for next. I'm going to hit control C, control V. This duplicates the button. And I'm going to change its text from for next to for next minus minus. For next minus minus. And I'm going to double click on it. And I get another section of code, another set of curly braces with another private void button two underscore click. This will get executed every time we click the second button. So I'm just actually going to copy this, this previous code. And what I want this to do is it's going to be reverse countdown. I want it to say 3, 2, 1. So to do that, I'm going to start out by saying i equals 3. Now, it's going to keep going as long as i is less than 4, which will get it'll execute once and lose that. I want to change this as long as i is greater than 0. So it should go from 3 to 1. But we're also incrementing it. We're adding 1 every single time. If we change this to a minus minus, it's going to subtract 1. So it'll go 3, iterate through the code, and then it'll subtract 1 from the i, and then it'll be repeat again. It'll be 2, subtract another 1 from the i. It'll be 1. So let's test this out. First code, 4 next, still should be 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. I hit 4 next, minus, minus, I get 3, 2, 1. So that is a 4 next, both up and down.